Howdy there, folks. I'm Walker Vestgood. I wanted to give you a quick message before you jump into this episode of the Off-Brand Golf Show. I just wanted to let you know we're doing a five-episode challenge. You're in the middle of it here with this episode. We've got five episodes of the Off-Brand Golf Show running back to back to back to back. And if you like what you see here, make sure you subscribe to us. Also, click the like button on any of the videos that you watch. Definitely helps out the channel and we appreciate a lot. Happy to have you here. Welcome. You can consider yourself an OBG. And without further ado, here's the episode. Welcome to the Off Brand Golf Show, coming to you live from the Off Brand Golf Studios in a clubhouse in a desert by a cactus. Uh, hey, y'all. I'm your host, Veronica Vestgood. She's not the host. I'm absolutely the host. Hey, we're not talking about pro stuff. We're just talking about donkeys like us, total amateur hour on this podcast and on the course. Uh, kick back, relax, enjoy yourself, and listen to us talk about how much it sucks to suck to be a beginner golfer. <laughs> That's all you, I think. For sure. I'm Walker Vestgood. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'm excited. I'm excited we're doing this one right now. You should be this, excited. This is a little later than I get old uh, Veronica to hang out in the studio ever. I'm going to turn into a golf ball pumpkin halfway through this. A pumpkin ball? A pumpkin golf ball. Yeah, it's late. We're in the off-brand studios, but we're here for a reason. Veronica, you want to tell them what that reason is? Well, our first reason is to get people to subscribe and follow because we're awesome and off-brand golf is a source of amazing golf content. I uh, think we're also here because we sort of pseudo played hooky from the last part of our workday and played around a golf. And my front nine was awesome and my back nine was dog shit. And we're going to try to encourage other beginner golfers to not give up like I wanted to. So the second reason we're here is we were kind of, I, I was all of a sudden hoping that we would get to, uh, we would get to, um, a thousand, a thousand scurvies. subscribers while we did this live. Cause you know what we're going <clears> to <throat> do when we hit a thousand? What? <laughs> going to pop bottles in the club. Yeah. So we're at, we held steady at nine. Oh my God, our subscriber number went down. <gasps> what? We were at 976. Oh, oh no. Oh no. What we terrible lost. terrible person actually goes through the effort of unsubscribing. No, 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 no. no. It's Google. So what Google does is they clean <sighs> out. Such a bitch. They clean out all the donkey, like fake oh, bots and stuff. Bots. Yeah. So they clean out all the bots like once a day. I mean, the bots are like the equivalent of people that manipulate their handicap that you played with recently. So death to bots and handicap scammers. Yeah. If anybody needs to scam their handicap, it's me. I may have to talk about that tonight. We may have to tell that story oh, a little bit. There's not enough time in the day. Damn it. We were at 976 subscribers to the off-brand golf channel. Now we're at 946. So All right, 30 946. We'll do something special for whoever the thousandth person no, is. No, we'll never know because none of these donkeys, the, these uh, these donkey listeners, they don't they don't put up like they're listening to, or they like subscribe to like weird porn channels and stuff, so they keep their subscriptions mm. private. Okay, I don't understand the world of YouTube and subscriptions, but if you're listening, please subscribe. I promise <laughs> we're awesome. We don't suck. It's cool. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for us. All right, cool. Man, what? I'm so bummed. I know. So don't bummed. get derailed. This is just all like right, your golf right. game. Like, you got to move on to the next no, shot and no, let it go. No, no, no. You can get derailed. You can get derailed. Okay, well, when this I got is, derailed today, you weren't super supportive. That was different, though. You you were shedding tears on a golf course. Okay. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> just going through it. Just out there fighting for my life, okay? It's a lot of situations. So how's that going, by the way? How's the... Uh, how's the the amateur golf career going set the stage when did you start playing golf i started playing golf in the fall let's call it september ish 2021 so we are currently in june of 2022 so i'm within my first year it's very hard it's very hard i will say i have been taking lessons from day one which i highly highly recommend 
Even though I have the makings of a beautiful swing, uh, the outcome of said beautiful swing is completely hit or miss, which I guess the outcome of dog shit swings is also hit or miss. Uh, but I do recommend taking a lesson. Every time I go to my lessons, what do you hear from me as soon as I leave? Every lesson. Just like, oh, I fixed all this oh, shit. Oh, God, whatever. I fixed it all. It's all dialed in. Yeah, then I go play, and then it's maybe I mean, welcome to in. golf. That's that's what it is. You go get on a range, and you try something new. And honestly, you know what I think it is? I think once you, like, start to get, uh, once you start to get acclimated to your golf swing, whatever that may be, just, like, switching up little things here or there, like, always feels good for, like, the first day or two or whatever, but it's really... Like in a week or a week and a half, you've either forgotten it or it doesn't feel the same or whatever. Well, that, that I, I mean, think everybody experiences that. Well, and the plasticity in our brains as we age decreases, oh, so man. it's harder. You can't be ripping off other people's podcasts. I'm not, okay, that's science. Like I'm not ripping off <laughs> science. I'm just stating the facts that the older you get, the harder it is to ingrain new behaviors, muscle memory, skills, etc. And, you know, I ain't no spring chicken, so... Mostly your shitty, stubborn attitude is what like, keeps you from... Uh, I disagree, <laughs> because have I ever quit? I thought it was happening today. You said oh. I, was, I, I should pack it in. Uh, well, you were stomping sh- around. Should, for sure. <laughs> should have 100%. I, I actually did think it was going to happen. From 11 today. through 16 and a half, <laughs> it should have ended, for everyone's sake. I think on the 14th hole or 15th hole, when our group like departed us... Uh, I gave you an out. You didn't take it. I'm I'm surprised. I, I thought never you were take, take it. it. Never say die. You gotta. You gotta. <laughs> and again, everybody knows. Anytime you're doing anything new or anything in general, you kind of want to end on a high note. So, it took until <laughs> my approach shot on 18 from 11. It took my uh, fairway f- three wood. You had a good drive on 18. You put together a good good drive, a terrible approach shot, and then your third shot into the green. It's very true. Was pin high, like 12 feet, but it was, it was kind of a rough rough putt. But I mean, you were way out. You hit it over a bunker, like tucked tucked pin, water right, huge hill on the left. Just danger Just everywhere. Yeah, learning how to play golf is hard. It's tough. But it's frustrating because in your mind, you're like, okay, like, bring the club back and you swing it through and you kind of rotate your hands and you do a few things and the outcome should be very consistent and it's not. And I literally Walker, he's like, you didn't do this. You didn't think about that. I, the good shots and the shit shots, I'm thinking about doing the exact same thing. I don't ever say, it just doesn't do the thing. Hold on, hold on. Like you lifted your head. I'm like, I was thinking about that's the only thing I ever say. It's not even lifting your head. You just top the ball so bad because you just refuse to put the club into the ground. And like when you put the club in the ground, everything works out fine. But otherwise, you refuse to do it, and it's just top. Yeah, until I hit one fat today and almost broke my wrist. Yeah, that that, I mean that was an outlier. I've never seen you do anything like that. So, Veronica picked up golf and has been working hard at it and plays once a week with some girlfriends that she's met that she's played shout and out to wine and nine, <laughs> nine yeah and nine. they're branded now oh, right you guys are wine and nine so we're coming for you off brand golf <laughs> <laughs> i got 946 subscribers mm-hmm. god i i thought we we're gonna get to 1000 tonight and then i just realized they erased a bunch of bots man that's heartbreaking well, okay high quality only so yeah and i will say quick plug for playing nine there's a nine hole course up near veronica's hood and it is a great especially right now when the days are long in the summertime we tee off at five o'clock on wednesdays great midweek hump day leading into friday junior on thursday kind of getting ready to roll into the weekend uh, but nine is a great bit of practice. Now, I will say that generally I kind of feel dialed in by hole nine and I'm like, oh, I'd be better if we played 18. That was not the case today. My front nine was great. My back nine was tragic, but you know, it's a long week. That beer is aggressive. It's good, but the bison meat Meat loaf that we, I just, the meatloaf, the the bison meatloaf that we just had. Followed by the peanut butter stout. No, but it's making it taste waxy. Mm. It's That's not, too bad. Can we crack into the, the bourbon over here? Please. I'm already cracked in. Mm. A little Breckenridge. Shout out to Colorado. Beautiful golf courses. Yep. Breckenridge. So one of the things I posted on... So I'm getting involved in Reddit. And the reason why I'm getting involved in Reddit... First off, I mean, 
I think everybody re- understands what Reddit, Twitter, actually, you know, Reddit seems to have a few more like actual conversations than Twitter yeah, does, but Reddit's they're both more cesspools. Sophisticated, for sure, but it is a bit more sophisticated. I don't, I don't Reddit. I, I've never done, I've never done it. I've never engaged in Twitter. Yeah. I like but Twitter's pretty straightforward. Reddit, there's like sub Reddit's things that you could talk about one voting and down and whatever. <laughs> and that doesn't all exist on Twitter. So yeah. Reddit's strange. So. But are you saying that you're getting into Reddit so you can talk about bourbon? No, so we can talk about uh, like golf. To be honest, like oh. just you is know, there a lot of golf traffic on Reddit? There is. Yeah. There's a golf. Uh, there's a golf subreddit. There's also a golf circle jerk subreddit, which is much smaller. But the golf subreddit has about five thousand people in it at any given time, and uh, they talk about all kinds of things. So they talk about. There's two things. <laughs> One is they talk about a breadth of topics. So a lot of it's like, hey, rate my swing or like. Oh, God, well, that's just asking to have your ego Right. Crushed. Just have your balls kicked in. I would be def- okay. Yeah. Uh, tip for beginner golfers. Don't ask, especially strangers. Right. Dude, you know what somebody posted? You don't know who these people are. Somebody on Tuesday posted uh, oh, no, 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 a no. golf themed gender reveal. This guy posted it and was like, hey, check it out. I'm so happy. I'm having a boy. Aww. And people just fucking so reached into his anal cavity and pulled his Aww. guts out the back of him. Dude, it was. That's unfortunate. Dude, That's it was. The t- internet makes me sad. And I, you know what's sad funny? Place. You know what's funny is he responded like, oh, hey, well, sorry you feel that way, but have a great day. He was like, Aww. this guy was like super positive. No, I'm sad. And dude, it was I, literally all I wrote on it was, uh, I'm like, guy, I hope your kid inherits your gigantic fucking balls for doing this because oh, like good. they're good like and i hope you have some left after all these guys get yeah, a, done kicking them in the digital deals like everyone everybody hates, hates them, them and maybe he's except just like, for like the parents of the soon-to-be parents like maybe the grandma or grandpa like maybe they like it no mm. one else likes it Not nobody interested. likes that shit no not nobody interested. i mean yeah it's it's pretty bad but anyways there's all kinds of stuff that's posted on it but it and it's just whatever golf. Like the big thing that obviously everybody's talking about is like the live golf oh, tour. God. But like people are getting sick of it and whatever. But the r- reason why I even brought this up is because I've been posting things to it. And I mean, like, first off, because I think there's interesting information you can pull from it, which is going to help me create content on this platform. But as a c- just consumer, like, well, would I find anything helpful on there? Well, uh, like as a consumer? Yeah, like just as a, yeah. Like if I'm looking at the golf Reddit. It's just whatever. a waste of time. Yeah. It's all a waste of Sounds fucking like time, it. right? Like if you're having good conversations with your friends, you don't need to jump on. Yeah. However, if, you know, I, I think people who do videos or create content or write articles or whatever they do, there are a lot of questions being asked in there that you can do a great, you know, it, that a lot of people ask. So there are questions that are great that a lot of people ask that you can do a video and answer for and you know bring people into your your sphere a little bit so mm-hmm. i'm i'm i started scoping it out for that i also talked to not a scratch golfer and he he's a long time redditor for i think like 15 years so he kind of you know yeah so he brought a lot of uh traffic into his own page so i was like you know if if the I'm definitely not doing it. It's the primary reason. I think the the primary reason is I just want to understand like uh, what golfers around the country like They're just talk about, about right? Like right. outside of the clubhouses that I visit. So um, there's that. But then you know, ancillary effect. If if some folks like discover what we're doing here and, and like it, that's cool too. But um, anyways, <laughs> the. I posted, I've been posting like old photos and videos and stuff Mm -hmm. because obviously I take like what I think are really... This is the roundabout detour we took to get back to the Denver topic. Yeah. Okay. No, just don't stress. You can talk about, just let it, let it branch, let it branch. It's a delta. It's a delta. It's not a river. So you are, so I... See, that derails it. <laughs> that stupid shit is what derails it. You do the same... Th- Dude, Jason with the J does the same fucking thing. 
and it it just blows up the whole thing. That note to self. Blows though. up the whole if thing. If you're going to take people on a detour, you got to still have your eye on the original exit. So you wait until I get back to the original exit, and you're like, hold on, let me throw some bricks well, in the, front of me. No, the whole time I'm like blindfolded because I'm like, where is this going? And then it rips off, and I'm like, oh, we're going back to Denver. It's just a conversation. Just have a conversation. Right. I just want to get back to the beginner golfers and and really oh, give them advice relax, of do not relax. ask people to rate your swing. And be careful who you ask for advice in general, but I'll get to that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I feel like I take pretty good photos for of, sure. of uh, golf holes, you know, sunsets on golf courses, whatever, whatever it may be. So what I will say is I have, I'm looking this up right now. I posted a shot that was taken, one of actually which were, whoa. It was taken in September of 2020 on our first golf trip to Denver. Our first trip anywhere our together. First trip ever together, correct. Um, so one of the pictures you took mm. was of me like standing at one of, uh, like yes. you were up above. Uh, but you know the picture of like the – so I took a picture. Arrowhead Golf Course is in the Denver area, and it's actually funny. Some people tried to shit on it and got shit on, <gasps> on by the like course? a – course? They Absolutely were like shitting not. on the course. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Two thumbs up. <laughs> right. All the stars. Right. Arrowhead is incredible. Right, right. So like – Anybody that shits on that hates themselves. <laughs> yeah. You have to hate yourself yeah, to yeah, hate yeah. a place like that. It's gorgeous. Yeah, so these pictures – so. It was like the number one trending thread on, you know, Reddit for a couple of hours or not on Reddit itself, but Reddit golf. Mm. Uh, there were 114 comments as it stands. There's 454 upvotes, which is kind of a lot for, for like golf. Like the most I've ever seen is like one, one or 2.5, uh, K, uh, upvotes. But what was funny was. There were people, like some asshole, dude. And so Reddick is like home of terrible takes and really like angry people. Like, like the some internet. of the, dude, there, there was, it's a home of like the worst takes I've ever read. Mm -hmm. But one, one guy like got on there and told me like, just like laced into me about like how shitty the content was and like, you suck at this and like <laughs> all this shit. And like he, and he jumped into a thread to say this like on a thread where everybody was like, dude, this is dope. Like, good job. Like, like blah, cool blah, picture, blah. Yeah. Or not on this particular oh, thread. It was a different thing. He was it. like, you can't do shit. You're fucking sorry. Like, you suck so at this. Sad. No one likes your shit. And it was funny because, dude, just like as an athlete coming up, like as a young guy, there's a, like when you do that, you're going to put yourself in front of a bunch of people who are going to shit on you. For sure. So like you, you, you know, you face jealousy or, or like if you a guy who dates like pretty girl like who it, it, I'm trying not to humble brag but like I've oh, been yeah. involved in situations in life where people are just gonna shit on me because that's what they do they shit on sure you know people they don't like or you know they get jealous what whatever it is so <laughs> there's tons of this stuff but somebody hopped into this fucking thread and the it was actually the very first comment which is what sparked you know the fifty thousand views that it got and like the uh, the uh, 450 upvotes. The very first comment was like, "Uh, let me read the exact one. We'll go by old here. Should say, yeah, boring course with pretty rocks. So the guy who so so by the way, this is from a guy who like literally everything I post, he just like says the worst shit he can think of to say. Oh, I'm sad and for I, this guy. Yeah, I don't know why. Should I put him on blast or no? I mean. It like it, it doesn't have like first and last names. It's some right, bullshit right. name, whatever. Just some Reddit handle? Do you call it a handle? What do you a <coughs> name? I don't know what you call your Reddit or name. Right. So you know this got voted downvoted into nothingness. But he says boring cor course with pretty rocks. So I just wrote back like, "What'd you shoot?" <laughs> I'm like, "What'd you shoot?" So he goes, "Only played there recently for a scramble. No way I'd pay the prices they want what? to play that course. It's a course for tourists and people who don't know any better." There are so many better courses for a lot cheaper okay, around Denver. Okay, guy. Right, you're missing First the point, all, yeah. bro. And if you call like, Arrowhead pretty rocks, it's like going to the ocean and being like cute bathtub. Like, <laughs> it's so <laughs> off base. What an idiot. That guy hates himself. Yeah, and then somebody I'm came up. for you, buddy. Dude, somebody came along, and I, I will call, call this guy out. 
his name is Ironic Hipster Cake, which I think is a funny name. Okay. But he's like, look, locals will come in here, diss in the course as per usual. It's a must play for tourists. Don't listen to these grumpy ass locals. The course is stunning and an experience worth its hefty price. That got upvoted like 30 something times. Yeah. I'm like, and I just wrote, yeah, crazy. You would arrive to this course and get out of your car and see what I saw in photo number three, which is the overlooking like the clubhouse yeah. and the whole yeah. thing, right? And have anything like negative to say about it. It should be on anyone's bucket list sheerly for the beauty for of it. Sure. And then everybody was like, yeah, this is, they're like, look, I get if you're a local, the driving distance, it's pretty windy there all the time, the price, like I get it from their side, but like to dissuade non-locals from experiencing it is like criminal. Yeah. Like you would show up to this thing. Like I honestly, I played, I played Pebble and I played Arrowhead in Denver and like Arrowhead is, I, I, I mean, they're on par with one another. I don't know which one's better. Yeah. I, I mean, the the mystique of Pebble because it has all the the, the history, right. right? The tournament history, and you're play, you're walking the same fairways as like all these greats forever, right? Sure. So like, there's that. But in in terms of like pure beauty, I mean, one's in the mountains, obviously, uh, up against the Rocky Mountains, right? And the other one's up against the Pacific Ocean. So, like, I mean, not even the Pacific Ocean. Just, uh, no, it, it's actually bay? up against. It it, it's Carmel Bay, technically. Yeah. It's in a bay. But regardless. It's not Monterey Bay. Carmel has its own bay. <sighs> Monterey Bay is to the north of it, mm -hmm. where Monterey City is and, like, Seaside and Pacific Grove. But you have to kind of hook around. It goes yeah. out in the seven-mile drive, 17-mile drive goes out into the ocean. Then it hooks back in to Carmel Bay, and that's where... Shout out to our girl, Hales, from Monterey. We'll be uh, golfing with her in Boise oh, we need in September. To get, you're right, you're right. We need some footage. She hits bombs. She's a... Yeah, we She's gotta get her... girl golf idol. Dude, we gotta get her on the pod. She's For like sure. a collegiate female golfer. Former She's collegiate. Badass. Yeah, she sounds still in Anyways, Reddit is, you know, like the rest of the internet, just a complete cesspool. Dumpster Although, fire. dude, there are some, some cool stuff, but... I bring this up because Denver uh, posted that picture, picking up some, you know, plenty of traffic from Reddit. A lot of good people with good feedback on there. And then a lot of just hater dickwads. But uh, this Breckenridge. So we found Breckenridge from that trip. Bourbon. We, yeah, right. We had, you had an old fashioned made with Breckenridge. You were like, yeah, this is delicious. Probably a Manhattan. It's more my speed. Was it old fashioned? <laughs> It might have been a Manhattan, but we, so we ended up like finding a liquor store that was like in the ghetto for sure. and we went in there at like 1130 at night. You were afraid to like leave the car, the <laughs> rental car alone. Do you remember this? And like <laughs> you, I bought, you actually bought the Breckenridge. It was I, shockingly sketchy for Denver. I, I bought the other one. I bought Denver the ghetto. one we went to the z distillery. Oh God! It started. Oh, uh, I was at Shenandoah. Uh, sh uh, Shanahan's. Stranahan's. Stranahan's. Yes. My bad. I'm tired. Str so Stranahan's. So good. And uh, <laughs> we ended up trading because, like, you liked one better. I liked That's the Breckenridge. True. That's true. But anyways, so we're drinking out of Breckenridge, Colorado. And it's made with water that's like melted snow caps, right? It's like right. melted, yeah, pristine yeah, snow off the snow water. Yeah, off the Rockies. But it's a rum cask finish bourbon. And it's delicious. If you if you like rum and you like bourbon, it's dude, it's great. Dude, any spirit finished in another cask barrel, whatever, so good. I had tequila last night that was finished in uh six months in French oak barrels, and it was divine. It's very good. I would have bourbon finished in your mouth. Oh, okay. How long did that take? 23 minutes and 25 <laughs> seconds. Okay, great. For uh, your sexually accosted. Yeah, so back to what you brought up about Reddit and about Rate My Swing. Dear God, do not ask people. I mean, you have to be very careful. And this is what I appreciate. Don't ask about. anybody besides sure. a licensed well, professional. Correct. And I don't even know if they have licenses per se, but let's just go with your local pro. But even still, I mean, there are things about what my coach tells me to do that you disagree with. But conversely... There are things about your swing that you're like, don't listen to me or don't watch me because this only works for me. And so that's sort of the balance. Yeah. That's what I'm navigating right now is 
what are the natural elements of my swing that are maybe a little unconventional versus what are just bad habits that I need to overcome to maintain this like textbook swing that I'm going after. But you do have to, the other thing too is you've, you've got to figure out like what's going to click for you. And a lot of times if I'm topping the ball or if I'm doing something and you're like, just think about this or do this. And I'm like, no, that doesn't resonate with me. I finally have to think like when you say, keep your head down, I have to think about letting my right shoulder cross my body before I turn my head. So I'm thinking about my right shoulder, not my head. If I think about my head, my head's still looking at the ball, but my shoulders are already turned toward the flag and it, it's a tragic outcome. So my point is, most people aren't as psychotic as I am, so they're just like, oh, I don't know, I just swing the club and hit the ball and it's fine. But if you want to have a beautiful textbook ballerina swing like me, f- you got to figure out what resonates for you with you because it's going to be very different for everyone. It doesn't matter, Linda. It doesn't matter. It You're does just going to think you're right and argue about it and throw a club no, and cry no, and no 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 i rarely throw a club but when i do it is incredibly satisfying it's not even angry it's like a <laughs> frisbee like, a, like i've I only just, seen you do it once yeah i just kind of chunk and you them, really but, gave it the heave but i do it in a very like gentle safe delicate way where i know the outcome is going to be okay because i do love my clubs they get regular baths they always like just have a my clubs have a wonderful Didn't you like life. helicopter one the other day yeah that's what i mean like a <laughs> like a frisbee i threw it gently where it's not gonna get like it's gonna land like flat on its side okay. like a belly flop of a club it's not gonna like don't know like hit on one like the handle and the grip and it's gonna go bouncing everywhere it's just gonna lay there and be like bitch you're the one that swung me like that i have no control over you the the homemade patchwork like mechanically incorrect golf swings that i see on which, by the way, I, I I don't have, like I'm across the line at the top. Um, Your driver swing too is long. the only one that's just completely out of control. <laughs> it's very like, I was Scotty Scheffler before Scotty Scheffler was Scotty Scheffler. So like my feet are all over the place. So yeah, yeah my, both toes pointing yeah, my, forward my at foot the flag, is weights in the back foot, like. You would think he... 305 carry, 305 carry. No, I mean, you hit absolute nuclear piss missiles, so don't listen to me, but it's like... It's ugly as shit. If your driver swing was a... You know when a a baseball player swings so hard that he ends up taking a knee? Yeah. That is basically what your swing looks like. Like, you should damn near take a knee afterward. (laughs) But it goes really far, and... Much so my point I. was, I was going to say Veronica's swing is a, like, I mean, it's very Adam Scotty, put it, put it that way. And like, she mm. was, she's been swinging like I'm that. going for Rory, but one day. Um, well, you said last week my wedges were very Dustin Johnson, though this week they were very Justin Donson. <laughs> No, it's funny because when you do swing the club well, it's more it's Dustin so Johnson great. than anything else. Because like your hips clear, your head stays in the same place. You you rotate, today. you rotate while your your hips are on like a forty five degree. Uh, I guess it's not forty five. It would be ninety plus forty five. What's ninety yeah, plus one thirty five? Don't ask me. To yeah. Do fast so math. whatever it is, but everybody's thirty five. Everybody's seen Dustin Johnson's live fucking broke ass live swing. Broke ass, please. Dude, they were shit, but not to talk, get into pro golf, but they were. Because we don't do that here. They were shitting the golf channel. Obviously, the golf channel's just, you know, shilling for the PGA Tour, but they were shitting all over DJ after like deep throating him for the greater, greater half of like the last decade. Uh, and just talking about like how he fell off and like all the shit, the guy was ranked number three at the end of 2021. He's barely played. So now he's down to like 15, but like, dude, he was number one for the majority of 2021. Yeah, like that's not even one calendar year from now. Uh, and ago. nobody's going to be like Tiger. That's just <laughs> killing the game. Number one for, but I mean, it's not period right, of time, but whatever it's, but it's not even true that the guy's like falling. Well, I don't know. No, they're just a, hating he's on a great everybody. Player. And I want to swing like him, and I want to swing my driver like Rory. You swing your driver like... Well, like kind of like a grandma currently. Dory? <laughs> Dora Gr- the Explorer. Grandma Dory? <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, so don't ask. Be careful who you ask for an opinion. But I do recommend if you're just getting into golf, take a lesson. Take a couple lessons. It's a great investment. For the amount of money you're going to spend on green fees and carts and balls and gloves and clubs and all the things, it, it, invest in some lessons. It's super helpful. I mean, make sure you like the coach yeah, first. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Because there are some donkey coaches out there, I'm sure. Yeah, there are certainly. Don't. Yeah. Make sure it's like a real coach too. Like if somebody's offering lessons on like Reddit or Craigslist or <laughs> approaches you at the fucking <laughs> driving range and they don't work Craigslist. there. Yeah. What's that? I said you probably shouldn't buy much of anything on Craigslist. The nice thing about a coach is with mine and what helps me is being. Didn't a very, I meet you on the, Craigslist? Very funny. <laughs> I was waiting. I was going to see what you were going to do with that. Oh, I'm super visual. And so for me, when my coach records my swing and then we put it in freeze frame. And so then I'm, I've addressed the ball and he draws a circle around my head and a circle where my hands are and a line as to what the plane of the club should be. And then he slowly plays it and we trace it and we see where things are. I can then compute what it felt like versus what it looked like in the outcome, not just the outcome of where the ball ended up, but kind of, you know, the mechanics of the swing. So being able to see it helps because when you think, I'm going to do the same thing over and over and over and very different things happen with a ball every time. Being able to see what you did is very helpful. And I've tried, I mean, I'll prop up my phone against the empty bucket that the range balls came in and try to record and kind of drag it through in slow-mo. It's not the same as when he puts the circles and the lines and does the things. So my backswing, awesome. Uh, rest of the swing, whew, anybody's guess. It's good. You just, it's funny because... You know, I mean, shorter clubs are easier to hit, so it makes sense that you uh, can hit all your wedges good. What's weird is mm. you can hit a pitching wedge like that, but you start swinging a nine iron differently. Dude, They're I, the same I have, club. I have the iron yips. Yeah, you do have full on I have, iron a, I have a mental block on that, so I'm going to work on that on Friday. I would say for anybody who needs to swing better, they should get lessons. But, like, if you can... If you can get the ball airborne and relatively hit it in the same direction, you should be learning how to play the golf course. You should be learning how to plot your plod, plod your way, plod your way around. You should learn how to shoot a golf ball around a, a golf course well, that will lower your score faster than anything. But when you say that part of learning how to shoot your way around a golf course is understanding all of the clubs in your bag and my concern about people that just like, oh, they swing like a jackass, but they get it in the air. They tend to have like these three or four clubs that are just their go-tos. Like they just hit those. They figured yeah, it out. Yeah, then just play golf with those three or four clubs and figure out how to hit your way around a golf course. Okay. Your score will go down drastically. This is like, there's no debate on this. I mean, I would never take you on because <laughs> clearly you are significantly better than I no, am. But that's, but that's how you plod your way around. T today... There was a situation today on a hole, which is funny because I'm releasing like in two weeks, I'm going to do a video or release a video that is from T T box to time you put the ball in the hole. It explains how you, how you play a golf hole from literally T to the time that you sink a ball. So like everything you need to take into account about your lie, like how, you know, where to hit the ball, what to consider all these things. The hole that I'm going to use is the hole that you got in this situation. Do you remember it was it was the hole on the back nine where you had decided that oh like the God. back nine was going to be trash. It was where you hit your you hit your drive. You were going to hit your driver, and, and then you I, took it away from me, right? And gave you the hybrid, hybrid, and it cr the ball crept into the water anyways, so it was still not a too little club. But the problem was you you set so here. This is actually a great example of what I'm dog talking about. Shit. Like you no, can't no. see that there's water. Right. So let me, the water let me is like this yeah. evil little bitch ass creek, it's, but it's like down right. a little bit. But we slope have GPS. And, and there are <laughs> electricity towers and a cart path by a fence by like what looks like a penitentiary. It was an airport. <laughs> I don't know. There's it this is a shit bag hole. I that hole was fucking awful. Right. So there's bunkers every. I mean, it's just it's weird. Like it's like it's like a bad video game where like the game glitched and it overlaid two holes onto one, and you're like, where the fuck am I supposed to lay up right. or hit? The, it was awful. That right. hole's the worst. So, hey, the, fuck that hole. So you're standing. You're standing. So this is. So anybody could play this hole 
if they I'm exposing myself in the <laughs> studio. Uh th- anybody could play this hole with like the ability to get like four golf clubs in the air. So like exactly what you talked about. So you got so here's the thing. If you get up on that tee box and you hit driver, wherever you were trying to hit it or had the idea about hitting it over to the right of the water I or whatever. I would have cleared that stupid little bitch ass stream that ate my ball. 98% of your shots, if you stood up there and hit 100 golf balls, 98% of them would end up in the water or over the fence or up against the fence on the right. <sighs> Y'all, Walker's so dramatic. He makes no, his ball. It, 98%. No. Nin- if I, uh, tell you what, we'll talk about me. If I had taken a, a, a club, like let's say a five iron or wh- whatever I take that would get me to there, I would say five or four iron. If I had hit that, which is roughly the same as like your driver right now, if I had tried to hit the shot that you did, I would put 70 balls into either the water or out of bounds. Like it's not. It's a terrible you, hole. It's not fun at all. It's not you. Zero out of 10. So, so Skip that if you have the knowledge to say, okay, I'm going to throw this golf ball in front of the water instead of trying to go around it or over it or whatever, if you just pick a club and you, you know, so in, in this case it's perfect because ideally the right club for you would have been a six iron there or like maybe a five iron, like just throw it in front of the water. Then you can hit up over the water and then get on the green, right? And then you're on a, a par four and three with a chance to make par and probably make bogey because you two-putt a lot. So you were going to try driver, which would automatically put you in the water or OB. For the record, we were playing with some gals that play out there all the time, and they suggested hit a shit ball. So, by the way, tip for rookie golfers, get a good ball that is good for your gender, your distance, your club head speed, your whatever, all the above. Just get good balls. But also keep a plethora of not total shit balls, but like decent balls that you're not going to be sad when you they plunge to their death in the water. So I had a good ball in my pocket and a shit ball in my hand on the tee ready to just poke it in the ground. And Walker comes up like the caddy that he's not and takes the club away from me and hands me a different club and totally changes my game plan. Yep. And then you hit a perfect shot. And it rolled in the fucking water. And it rolled in the water because it's a (laughs) drought-ridden fucking golf course like all the rest on the West Coast right now. But the right idea, right? So then we get up there. You take your drop out of the water. And you ask me, (laughs) I I ask you, I'm like, do you have a club? Do you have a shot in your bag? The the shot was 83 yards, Mm -hmm. right? 83 yards to the flag. She's got to carry a bunker to a green she can't really see on the other side of the bunker. So I said, do you have a shot where you can get it up in the air over there? Or should you hit it left and have it roll up so that you can chip up from there? Hit it left away from the bunker, but next to the green where you can chip up and try to get up and down or two putt and make whatever, six. And I was like, do you have a shot that can get over that green? You were 100% positive that you had the shot. And by the way, I know that you do have that shot, but you selected between those two options, both which could work, and you committed to it, and, and you know you I made the attempt, the and then you taught. Yeah, because <laughs> I have you, the iron nips. You stood up out of it and threw it right in the water. Because what it was like a nine iron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if it was a pitching wedge, you would have hit it perfect. I don't know. My wedges were doing me dirty today. So the point I'm trying to make is. If you don't know how to swing, yes, I think golf lessons are the very first thing you should you should get after. If you can get the ball in the air, you should learn. But what you should if find nine, somebody. Uh, but what if the clubs they can get in the? Uh, so you're saying even if it's just four and they cannot like deviate from those four, just hit the shots you know out. how to hit. Don't be hitting that's fucking just, shots you never heard know. of. I don't know. I mean, I'm just a perfectionist. I want to learn how to hit every club in the bag. And I don't, why not? I, what, what are you just going to die tomorrow? Like we got nothing but time. There's plenty of time to play golf. Learn how to play all the clubs. I mean, if you don't give a shit about your score, do that. Okay. But if you, guy. I mean, <laughs> look. Okay. So then I'm going to get rid of all of my irons. Put it this way. I'm going to go driver, you took, you took, woods, you took, hybrids, wedges, putter. Let's look at your round no today. Irons. Let's look at your round today. Let's look at it. On the front nine, how many <laughs> shots did you try to hit that you didn't know how to hit? 
I don't know how to answer this question. Uh, do, can you think of any shots that no, you hit? No, the front where nine like, wasn't nearly as treacherous I as the back. That's not what I asked. I hit all the shots that I knew how to hit. I mean, right. I, I know how I should hit. Them. I didn't see you hit one shot that you were like, eh, I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to do this. You didn't do that at all. And what did you shoot? You don't even have to say the number, but in relation to every other nine hole score you've ever played, what did you shoot? Very well. How well? Average bogey, double bogey. I no, had no, two no. blow up holes. Your score was what? The lowest nine hole score you've ever shot. Correct. Right. So, why, why are you sad Wait, about this? What's the point this? you're making about the, the point, back nine? The point is that I magically started shooting stuff I don't know how to shoot, which you're making my case, which is when you have to hit clubs that you're not great at hitting, bad things happen. So, instead yeah. of being a little bitch and only hitting four clubs, learn how to get all, hit all your clubs. In the middle of a round? No, no, but I'm learning after practice. <laughs> I ended up in a lot of bunkers today. So my point is, Normally if I can get through this un okay. uninterrupted mm -hmm. somehow, is that if you don't know how to swing, yes, golf lessons are good because they teach you how to swing and get the ball in the air. If you do know how to get it in the air and you know how to hit certain shots and you don't know how to hit other shots, if you learn how to get around a golf course using the shots that you currently have, you can just eliminate mass loads of strokes from your score like immediately I then when you practice lessons. then when you practice you can practice all those shots you don't practice. know how to hit and get better at them but yeah i mean you can get lessons then too but i don't know it's like i just watch i watch people like sometimes people can get off the tee box okay and i'm like all right and then like their wedges are dog shit or they're st like they don't know where to stand what to do with their hands or their feet or they're putting like an asshole like i just i don't know i i don't think lessons are a bad idea but whatever so what other advice do we have for beginner golfers <laughs> get decent equipment make sure you have kleenex with you at all times I have a very runny nose, and sometimes we're in cool, breezy climates, which gives me the sniffles. Yeah, what are your other lessons for beginner golfers? I would say get decent equipment. Like, don't go big fly and think you need to get some fancy clubs because you're probably going to put those clubs through through some things as you're learning. Yeah, like 40-year-old irons are not going to help. Yeah, but don't, don't use dog shit. And get decent clubs and then put good grips on them. That's actually a really good point. There good are grips. lots of people who have like decent enough clubs, but their grips the are like grips old are and crap. Yeah, yeah. And, like yeah. and so good grips are important. You want to feel like you've got, I mean, that's like your control. You want to feel like you've got a good handle on the on the club and on what's going to happen. And that starts with the grip. So get decent clubs, clubs that you don't mind if you whew, 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 like frisbee them every <laughs> now and then. Though I don't recommend club throwing. And I don't, I'm not like pitching a fit. I'm just more, no, I, I mean, I'm going through it and I'm struggling and I'm not, but I'm not like, whatever, maybe I am a brat, but it just, it feels better. <laughs> I mean, you screamed Fuck. the F word. Yeah. So unnecessarily loud and violent. No, that was, I curtailed that because it could have been much more loud but and much more violent. But I'm just saying, violent. you, that was silliness <laughs> for I only how got, not bad it that been way. It could have been twice as loud. But it felt good, right? It was a good release. Yeah. You had to get it out of your system. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's my Frisbee. So <laughs> I just mix golf and Frisbee golf or whatever that stupid other sport is I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you on camera doing it one time, and then we're going to wait like six months, and I'm going to show it to please you. Please do, because like, but please get the shot that leads to the Frisbee, because people <laughs> will be like, yeah, I would have broken the club, actually, if I would have done that. <laughs> uh, so get decent clubs that you don't mind beating up a little bit. Um, put good grips on it. Have gloves that fit. I have small hands but long fingers, and my glove came unvelcroed in my backswing today and totally startled me. <laughs> I also you know have funny? longer nails, and my nails like poke holes in the ends of my gloves. I, I struggle with gloves. I have what, um, interesting hands. What do you think? What is the one thing about your game on a golf course, like m mental side, that you wish you didn't do? Or, or what's the one thing that you think if you overcame it would – make you have a better time on the golf course whether it's you shoot lower scores or enjoy yourself more you know i really try to shake off each shot but you can't help but stand over your next really i'm getting more consistent with drivers so that doesn't bother me but there's just a lot of it, it's it's mental i mean we talk about the mental game i now take a couple practice swings with my irons and I'll feel pretty good about it and as soon as i address the ball i'm like oh don't fuck this up and as soon as you do that like you're fucked 
So it's just when you say don't fuck this up, like wh- what part of it do you mean? So not during my up? practice swing, I think about all the things that I need to do and am doing right and what feels good. Like, yes, do that. That felt good. When I address the ball, I immediately run through the checklist of things not to do. Do you know the con- do you know what the concept of a think box and a play box is? No, but suddenly I need it. I don't know. I I don't think I'm quite there yet. I already know where you're going with it, but my problem is you're like just don't think, just do. But when I just do, it's not the muscle memory isn't there enough yet. There are a couple of mental cues I have to keep top of mind, and when I lose that, which when I contrary to popular belief, when I was having my meltdown holes, I was actually trying to think less, and the outcome was worse. All right, that's fair. So I think it's, and you know, you got to dance with the partner you brought. So I got to figure out, like, I was hitting everything to the right today. I don't know if I was leaving the clump face open, whatever I was doing. It was just everything was going to the right. So eventually Walker got me lined up far enough left that we had some good outcomes. But each day it's just I got to stop thinking about head, shoulders, knees, toes, the 800 different checkpoints that I want, like the white glove, you know, uh, certified pre-owned vehicle. I need to just, like, pick a couple and I try to think about too much. So something that I think you would benefit from is uh, like when we get paired with other people, uh, you don't like it. Well, it hasn't happened a ton yet. So either we're playing with another couple or friends or it's just the two of us. So it is a little unnerving when you're brand new because you're like, you know, as much as people are like, we're not judging you. We just want you to have fun. If you watch someone hit a shot like an asshole, you're like that idiot. I mean, I do. I don't, you know. I Maybe people y- aren't as judgy as I am. What? A, nah, I think, I think most random golfers of like whatever skill, they just want to play with good playing partners. Like I don't really, I mean. I feel like this is you taking a jab at me like struggling mentally today. No, I just think people want to play with good good uh playing partners yeah and i just i'm i'm too competitive i'm too much of a perfectionist i i struggle maintaining a even marginally decent attitude when i'm playing poorly it's frustrating for me and i know that's not fun to be around but what's so like like a like what's your expectation for poor and good like where does I just Where does like good I, become poor? I just feel like I should be able to course correct, no pun intended, a, a little bit more quickly. And so sometimes when I'm just making the same mistake or having the same shitbag shot, I just I know that I know better. So it's frustrating to not execute in a way that you know that you can or not even come close to a decent potential that you know you possess. And so I just I'm not a and maybe golf sometimes is for more slightly easygoing lackadaisical people. It's not. Oh, don't oh, don't worry. It's because not. I'm but I know. I mean, my girl Va is always like, you're not being fun right now whenever I start playing like shit and I get frustrated, but I just I don't know. I can't I don't like doing things poorly. Yeah, I would just like I know I try to be realistic, but that that's also where I struggle when on some holes I'm like, okay, is it going to be better if I play this out and end up with a hitting a good putt or something to kind of rally? Or do I just pick it up and compose myself? And I don't, I've yet to figure out when to make those calls because I don't want to be a quitter, but I also don't want to go into a death spiral, which. I honestly, I think the only time you should really pick up at this point or like really anybody so playing slowing stuff down. is if you're slowing stuff down. Like if you get to the point where you're just throwing it all over the green, because, because what, what I see happen with you and uh, like a lot of other people, you get in a hurry because you're like, uh, I'm holding stuff up. Yeah. And then, and then it's now, even worse. It, yeah, it just because sure. then at that point, you're just firing balls back and forth between bunkers over a green. For sure. So like, I only saw that happen like I think once today. But like, you know, it's I would say just fuck it, play it like the problem. Is, and something else happened. Everybody who's listening to this that play golf plays golf can can relate to this. But something happened today that like began on the eleventh hole at the tee box at the eleventh hole is that the group ahead of us was playing. I wouldn't say super slow, but they were definitely at least a hole behind, if not like a hole and a half, or maybe even two holes behind. They played the eleventh hole, held us back, and then left. So now we're two holes behind. When I and feel and our playing rushed, partners, the yeah, rails right. come off entirely. And our playing partners were 
had recognized this and I don't think they knew. I, I think I tried to tell them like, oh, obviously the group ahead of us left. Yeah, you said that a few times. Right, because they weren't, they were like so, they played fast for one. Two, they were just trying to catch up to that group. Now we've, it, here's the other thing. So it, it's weird. So we played the 10th hole. We're being held back by the group ahead of us. They're about a hole or two be holes behind. They, um, they disappear. They leave. So it was starting to get cold or windy or whatever, but for whatever reason, they bounced. So now we're like two holes behind the group that was ahead of them. And I'm like, why are these girls playing so fucking fast? Like they were playing like no practice swings. For sure. Like they weren't, they weren't cleaning their ball on, they stopped oh, doing never. all that, Yeah. but they were, they were doing all those things to some degree Yeah. until, and I was like, what the fuck? So we get done with we play they're hole eleven. That dick. Yeah, they were chasing that dick. There so we were some, some gentleman callers right. ahead. So we played holes eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Like fucking Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, like I'm so like, we, I, which yeah is like my fucking kryptonite on right. the golf course. You rush me, it's over. Fuck right. It. So we we get through hole thirteen, and there's these two dudes. Uh, standing on the side of the green up there, and I'm like, what are these fucking jamokes doing? Like, why are they there? And she goes, hey, you know, these two guys are going to join up. They're, they're really cool. And, like, the other girl had different uh, plans. So... Like, we're going to be a six They wanted... Which here's what no they wanted to do. They wanted to speed up, catch up, because there'd be nobody behind us, mm. so they could join those two and go ahead of us mm -hmm. and have us play behind. Yeah. Because, you know... They, they were pretty good, like pretty good for, you know, a couple older ladies. But like, uh, I think they were like, all right, we'll we'll play ahead of them. So that's what that was. But the shit part is they know you're a beginner. We like talked to them about it for several holes. Yeah. And they were just like, nah, fuck that. Like, we're going to make her feel, you know, rushed as she's bringing up. I mean, you're always going to be bringing up the rear just based on the fact that I mean, you do hit the ball a long ways, but if you don't and you miss it, it's it doesn't go anywhere. So like, it's gonna take you a while to like catch up. So for them yeah. to like put that pressure on you, I, I think that's kind of shitty. So that's that yeah, and it, it's it's rough for me because again, I just want to like a lot of people. You just want to play with good like playing partners. So they, I know you kept saying that. I felt like a bad partner, but I was out driving them early on when I was playing well. Like I was absent and I was putting better than them. No, you are for you, sure. You are good. I, I think in the middle of your round, you're like a phenomenal playing partner. At the beginning, you're not super... I was playing well at the beginning today, though. I know, I know. But you were like, I don't want to play with them. Fuck them. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. First of all, it was an absolute muni dumpster fire oh, when we got to the course. The tee box, right. Yeah, we get there. It's time for us <laughs> to tee off. These three jackasses are standing there, like yeah. thumbs up their asses. This and we're course like, what is time notorious. We're... And they're like, we were at 3.30. It's 37 after. Yeah. We're supposed to be teeing off. That guy so that came the out. the pseudo starter guy comes out and is like mad at them. So I've he never tells seen... them to wait and we're going to tee off. So Walker goes back to the tips and he's getting, and literally a couple practice swings get to, like all lined up. And right as he's approaching the ball to tee off, these dickheads just are <laughs> driving, driving out. They didn't tee off. They're just yeah. driving and they're not going down the car what path. Was that? What was that cart sound again? That's pretty good, Thank actually. You. They're going straight down the middle of the fairway, but like... Like not even on the car path, just like no, over the tee boxes. In the like, absolute ugh, middle. middle of the fairway. And only as fast as you have to push the accelerator to get the brake to come off. Yeah. Just about that fast. Yeah. And so we're like, what is... And there are now 17 people behind us. They're like men, women, children, yeah, there's dogs, probably our pets' heads are falling off. Yeah. There are so many people, golf carts everywhere. People are going around each other. It was absolute chaos. So this pseudo starter angry guy is like oh those idiots and oh and i'm gonna send you all out with them and them and them and them and you get a car and you get a car and i've I'm never like, seen that happening? guy have control over that Clearly. that first team i've never I, like th so this this it, golf it course is a shit show uh other tip i would say get a really basic range finder like nothing crazy nothing super expensive but as you're like kind of figuring out what distance you hit your clubs I've got a little blue tease. I got it on Amazon. It was like, what, a hundred and something bucks? But it's just nice to be able to figure out roughly what 
if I was just guessing every time, that would be a lot harder for me. I would feel a lot more uncertain with the shot. Yeah, and that's I feel like people probably really... look at me and go, "Come on, girl, you got a rangefinder? Yeah. Like it ain't that serious." But it is because I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> no, what it takes my two seconds, right? Yeah, and then like today, I got the distance, and then I <laughs> grabbed the wrong club, and then I. But it's was it's that just, the first time you've ever grabbed a wrong it, club? For sure, hundred percent. Sucks, huh? <laughs> yeah, it does. And I don't know if it was because my clubs were on the driver's side of the cart and then there was like that hitch thing sticking up and so then my clubs I'm used to them kind of like hanging over like the to the left and they were there anyway whatever how, how long was your shot do you remember mm, let me think about this it was 90 80 call it 70 80 yeah and I and should what? have taken a very gentle nine and instead I pulled seven and just blasted it so two extra clubs yeah yeah, it's and funny. And I actually like made pure contact. Which yeah, is rare, it was so funny because you hit it very well, and I was like, I, I was trying to figure out. I, I actually just had assumed that you didn't know like that you could hit that club that far, but it wasn't too bad. It was on the back of the green. Yeah, it wasn't terrible. But isn't that such a shitty feeling? You're like, why the fuck no, did that go so yes. far? And you look down at the number. And you're like, no. I know. Especially when I have the iron yips to like hit a strike it well, but it be the wrong one. It's like fuck. So See, yeah. you can hit a seven. You just got to pretend it's a nine. For sure. Pretend all of them are Dude, I know, wedges. My five and six, man. My five iron and I were just like having it out on the range today. It was. Do right. you know how many people are listening to this right now that are like, "Girl, I know exactly what you mean." I hope so. Dude, mid irons and long irons are fucking hard for most people to hit. It's super hard. They're super hard. Like. Dude, hit a three iron, a four iron, even a five iron's like tough. Six is where it starts to get a little easier. Yeah. But like, dude, even hitting a six iron's hard. It's hard for me for sure. I to tell you how hard it is, I have a I have like a combination set where my irons four, five, and six are not game improvement clubs, but they're more forgiving clubs. Mm. I basically have like blades. But then I have like cavity backs on, on like the mm. longer ones mm. because they're hard to hit. They are. And I, yeah, they are. And your clubs, I think, I actually like the clubs you have. She, uh, if, for anybody that has ever purchased or seen sticks, S T I X clubs, uh, they're, I mean, they're amazing looking, but like you definitely know if you miss miss the ball on the mm. strikes that you hit mm. I at least I do so you've got to know that you missed it a little bit yeah uh shout out to sticks I think they have a father's day 20 percent off going on right now so you can get a <laughs> yeah nice little set so yeah I'm, I'm a big fan I've got the black uh black shafts black heads they're all black clubs that are awesome I will say we I will put up I will post a picture of your bag setup it is awesome like she has a master's theme everything mm -hmm. on the uh on the back oh that's the show we need to do is like the master's recap in june oh yeah july by the time we do it but mm -hmm. yeah it's super dope setup with like all black clubs sticks is good the putter is pretty heavy uh walker recently played very well in a tournament and uh, used his winnings to get his caddy a Scotty Cameron putter <laughs> that is significantly lighter than my sticks putter, which I had just adjusted to almost 100 grams. Uh, right. Well, so, so yeah, so your whatever. typical like Scotty Cameron, whatever head it is, it's usually right around 360 grams. This one is 90 grams heavier. Yeah. 90. It's heavy. Almost 500 grams. Yeah, so I like the six clubs a lot. You can get a full set. It doesn't break the bank. I don't feel bad beating them up, obviously, uh, but I'm a fan. So, yeah, get some decent hardware, put good grips on, get a little cheaper range finder just so you can start to figure out what your distance is, feel a little confidence in your swing. The range finder is a good idea because I think often, I, dude, I think knowing the actual yardage, especially for, like, learning how far you hit your clubs, mm -hmm. like, as a beginner, is incredibly helpful and there's all kinds of like dude you can go on amazon and there are some that people have uh have compared to like bushnell or you know garmin's or whatever and found out that they're pretty accurate that are like 60 bucks 70 dollars. so i mean that little blue tees i have is awesome but to your point you're always like whenever you're approaching a shot you want to call back to a similar shot that you've hit that 
turned out well, obviously. And for me as a beginner, I mean, you, I could ask you, like, what did you score on this hole, on this course, on this day? And you'd be like, oh, yeah, it was a dog leg left, and I had this, and it was the wind was helping, and you would remember all of it. I can't, I couldn't describe half the holes we even played today. But my point is, when I know the actual yardage, it helps me remember the outcome a lot better. Yeah. So then I can actually kind of, you know, take more or less club based on the wind and all of that. Whereas if I didn't know the actual yardage, I wouldn't be able to even attempt to make those adjustments. Do you think, do you think walking or riding has, uh, has a, an effect on how well you play? It's such a good question. I do, I do enjoy walking a lot. I think you get to experience the course in a different way. When you walk, it feels a little more authentic, but it's all about the pace of play because if you're standing around and you're standing and you want to sit or if you're f- running for your life trying to keep up. And so for you and I, it's tough because obviously, you know, it'll take me three shots to catch up to your drive. I don't I don't know. I actually can't say if I play better or worse. It also depends on the weather. Like we walked nine last Friday and it was 98 degrees oh, and the man. blazing yeah. sun slightly hilly it wasn't a flat course but it's not super hilly but still it was really taxing and it definitely took a toll so i don't i don't know i would recommend people try both what do you enjoy more mm-hmm. playing well <laughs> jesus Christ. <laughs> but i don't know which oh. one that is so i don't i don't uh, I think they both they both have their applications. I enjoy walking, but I also, you know, when we're in a car, we're having drinks and the music's playing and we're listening to the same music. When we're walking, we kind of have to play our own music. Oh, another beginner tip. Get a little Bluetooth speaker that's got some sort of strap clip apparatus so you can have some music because it's super important. That was another shitty Reddit, Reddit take, which was like, <gasps> don't play your fucking country music while we're playing golf. <gasps> yeah, that was another one. Well, but we never play our music offensively loud, obviously. We're respectful. It's just kind of within earshot of us, and we've got these great speakers. I mean, when you're blasting it, dick down in Dallas, you can't, you got to keep it low. Yeah, railed out in Raleigh and <laughs> butt fucked in Boston's pretty <laughs> aggressive. But, and we generally ask people if we're playing with others, hey, do you guys mind? Do you know, what kind of music do you like? The country, are you cool with that? But we're not like, I'm sure it is annoying if people are blasting music, but we're, we're not outrageous with it. What's the, what's the, What's the funniest thing you've seen happen on a golf course? I don't know if I've seen anything exceptionally funny. I retold this story today, though, and I'm going to hijack it from, I don't know, maybe you'll remember who. Whomever told us that someone approached the ball washer once, washed their ball, reached for the ratty-ass nasty towel who that's hanging fuck from the ball washer. Who the told us that story? And they blew their nose <laughs> into the ratty ass rag towel <laughs> napkin that's like hanging green, from the ball. Yes. Which like Windex brand. I don't know what's worse, the fact that you blew your nose in it or that you were willing to put your nose on it because oh. both are disgusting. But I And so the gals and I, we were uh, all approaching the ball washer and I told them about the guy. Who that told we heard. us that story? I actually, I think it might have been just some random guy we were paired with. He was talking, yeah, he was talking about how somebody fucking blew their nose in, well, the, in the green and white, like raggy, yeah. like, like outdoor towel. I think maybe you guys were talking about things that you were glad that we're finally back from COVID and or we were no longer having to do because of COVID. That's right. We were and talking about that. he was like, well, ooh, ball washers are back, but, and this guy <laughs> just straight up blew his schnoz in that oh. towel, ta- in that rag. So... Yeah, I you ask me like golf course story and it's going to be snotty ball washer guy <laughs> or are you breaking which I wasn't there for either these are not first hand stories but the putter. I think you breaking the putter uh, you need to send people back to the podcast where you yeah. talk about that cuz it's so funny. Yeah, I should tell that story in some future episode again because it was it's so funny. Dude, these guys were like kids too oh it's such a good story so if good. I, it's episode i think two or three but it's with chris durr who was in uh random golf clubs uh eric anders lang breaking like the breaking series where they played at fuck i can't remember I whistling straights maybe maybe somewhere up in the the north but yeah t- tough golf course anyways he told that story because i think the first round i played with him 
uh, it occurred, but yeah, that that's pretty good. I think, dude, I've seen a lot of funny shit on a golf course for sure. I mean, I've seen like outlandish funny stuff. You have you were you hit by a golf ball or wait you almost. I feel like when you play your nine hole league night, you're almost getting your head taken off like every week. Yeah, there's some. Oh, also a uh, beginner golf tip. Uh, keep an eye on your ball or have someone keep an eye on it. And when in doubt, yell four left, right. Give people some direction, <laughs> but don't kill people. Because every time we get hit into people generally come up like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see it. I'm like, well, if you. Yeah. So beware of that no i mean i hit a goose and it ricocheted off the goose and hit another goose so uh, that was uh the extent of my golf that's ball crazy you've been playing less than a year and you've already hit an animal well where we play nine on wednesdays is like a fucking goose sanctuary <laughs> they're everywhere <laughs> and it's funny because the the mama geese gooses they'll shake their head no at you really hard before they start like at you as you're approaching their babies <laughs> and it's funny because i'm like no bitch i'm not coming for you either like we got to coexist on this course. So watch out for wildlife. Uh, <laughs> other beginner tip, don't approach any wildlife without a club in your hand so you can smack the shit out of it. Because geese, deer, swans. I mean, Snakes. you see, uh, oh, fuck a snake. <laughs> but you, I'm not, no. Rattlesnake. But you see, uh, you see a lot of footage on social media of people just getting, <laughs> getting fucked up by kangaroos. Get, yeah, kangaroos. Yeah. Like animals, they are not friendly. They do not want you to pet it's them. It's not a Disney It's do not, not a Disney movie. Go, do not collect $200. Do not approach animals on yeah. a golf course without a club. They're not going to change you into your ball gown. No, for absolutely the fucking, not. Yeah, it's no, not. Yeah, not so happening. don't don't get... Like every time I get near the geese, which is often, I'm like, I will fuck a goose up. I'll kill it. As a woman, do you do you like on a range and shit? Do you deal with like guys trying to like teach you shit randomly? They better fucking not be, by the way. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> they so there's always. Uh, or is it just old men being like, "You look so sweet." You know? No, I mean there was an old guy uh, week before last that came up and was like, "Honey." You ain't using your lower body, but if you rotate them hips, you'd really have a lot of power. And I'm like, thank you. I know that. So I think I also do. I'm just like, yeah, thanks. I'm working on it. Not like, oh, my God, really? Tell me about my hip movement. Like, no. I'm like, yep, thanks. Got it. Noted. Um, there's Doesn't a little it bit. creep you out that they're like. Someone's watching and cares that much. Like that know? much? Yeah. yeah it's like that's weird. nice as a dude is I never have to worry anybody. I mean, if they are, maybe it's like. I think most of the time, if like another dude ever audibly says something about you on it, it's usually like, for most guys, it's like, holy shit, you hit that a long ways. I think that's yeah. literally the only one. Nobody's ever like, oh man, if you uh, kept your hips, it, like nobody's going full top gun on you. Yeah. No, I can think of a few times where we've played around with strangers and at some point, if they're consistently doing something and they finally acknowledge it a little bit, you'll be like... Yeah, man, actually, you are doing this every time. They're like, oh, but they're always very grateful for it. But you you wait and it's adequately timed. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't I am definitely not unsolicited no. lesson. And I'm not a teacher. Like, I don't do teaching. I don't want to like I don't give a shit about anybody else in the way they play. But like if some guy's like, oh, dude, I just realized. Why is this like, happening? Yeah, it's like. It, or or if, if they figure it out or they discover it on their own, I'll reinforce that for them yeah. or they'll be like fuck i think i'm lined up to the right i'll be like you know what that's the best swing you've had all day and that went that way because you were lined up to the right not totally like you didn't push that that was yeah. like i might help reinforce but i'm not like trying to that would drive me nuts L luckily you know what's funny is cart girl kev has that shit happen to him all the time like p some dudes will like straight up give him advice on like his driver swing and stuff mm. which fucking blows my mind because he has the prettiest driver swing I've ever well, seen with my own two human, eyes. So I feel like people generally know to leave like really tall people alone. I, I, dude, I there know. have been times that people just unsolicited and I'll, I'll look at him and he'll look at me like, I cannot fucking believe I gotta listen to this shit right now. Yeah. This guy's like lights out pretty much every club in the bag and people try to coach him. It's fucking funny. I miss that guy. <laughs> yeah, I think... It, 
uh, being a girl. He'll, he'll on come a back range, someday. He'll come back someday. Being a girl in a range is a lot like being a girl at a bar, like on a business trip when you're Dude, at the airport I, bar and you don't want anyone to talk to you. It's got to be like, awkward. Just leave me. So I have to be very careful about like, do not engage, do not make eye contact. Like you've got to <laughs> kind of send the body language and the signals of like, I don't. Yeah. I don't need to be rescued right now. Please just focus on your own shitbag swing and leave me to mine, and we can just coexist. I, you know what's funny is I don't know. I've never known any like female pros, but I, I would love to just ask them like how they're treated and then compare it to like how dudes are treated. This makes me nervous because I was going to say the good news is there aren't just chicks out on ranges just hitting balls like a dipshit just to get hit on or pick up men. But I'm afraid that might actually be happening or happen <laughs> one day. And I'm very sad about that. Dude, I uh, honestly, uh, there are enough indicators for me. To think that there are chicks who just hang out because In think about the kind of houses for sure, yeah, for sure at clubhouses, but not on the range. Uh, I think you might have been right with your initial oh, assessment. God, no, I please, think please, bitches, don't infiltrate the range <laughs> for God. Can we? This is why we can't. Keep have your nice gold things. digging to the fucking clubhouse, Stay at the bitches. Fucking clubhouse, please, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> fuck them hoes man no <laughs> relax <laughs> snoop first of all i'd like to thank me snoop a loop we need to get by the way jason with the j it, if you're on youtube look up jason with the j and then find find the episode so jason with the j we were calling him gimme uh the first time he came in, just being stupid God. so jason with the j uh, look him up on YouTube uh, and watch his ghost episode. Mm. I'm not going to recommend any of the other episodes. We're doing a we're going to do a crossover video that's fishing, I think. Oh, all right. Yeah, it could be terrible. So uh, we uh, like we're going to skip uh, golf in the news tonight, I think. Yeah, we're going to skip straight to bed. <laughs> That's where we're skipping to. It's good. Uh, you don't want to refill on the old. Uh... Uh, no, because it's very late, and I have to go to work in the morning and finance my uh, my new golf hobby, which <laughs> is not cheap. Oh, I guess other rookie tip: play in the afternoon. It's cheaper. So take a look <laughs> at. Uh, there's a magical witching hour where suddenly the green fees are lower cost, like than... half, like. Uh, 25% of what they were. Yeah. And maybe not that low. And but. I would recommend it was also part of my challenge today when you're a newbie, go warm up. Like get to the course an hour before. And I know you think it's excessive, but like get there, get situated, get checked in, get a bucket of balls. Don't rush through them. Go roll some putts. Like just get warmed up and get in the zone. And today I was just like, I don't think it's a, a bad it, out of hell. For the, re for the record, I don't think warming up is excessive. I just don't need very many swings to do it. I need that, a so lot. that's me. Right. That's me. The other thing is, I play so much golf that if I showed up an hour on top of the fucking five hours it takes to take a, or play around these days. Look, my financial goals in life are to be where I play golf in two hours. That's my financial goal. <laughs> like, I want to be in a private club where I can just roll around and play in two and a half hours and call it good. Right, so that's well. just me. That's just me. So, but... Like, I'm not hating on anybody that wants to warm up. And I enjoy spending time at the club not playing around. But, like, when I play three times a week or four times a week or five times a week, dude, that's five extra hours that I'm, like, at a golf course. So I'm not always into it. But, like, if you want to go early, beginner. I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. I'm yeah. always. I'm just like, saying as a beginner, like, go through the whole bag. Like You hit. know me. I'll sit back there on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Hit damn near every club in the bag that you think you're gonna. I often don't warm up with six iron. That's or eight. Whoa. What? So, <laughs> yeah, get out there and warm up. So get decent clubs, put good grips on them. I mean, just golf pride, whatever. Go to the store, feel what you like, figure it out. Walker puts mine on, but you can go to your local golf store and pay them a couple bucks per club. They'll put them on for you. Let them dry before you go play. Uh, grips, little cheapo range finder. Just have some idea. Um, go and warm up, walk in, ride, figure out what you like. I did buy a push cart. I enjoy it a lot. I like having my own push cart because I have a cooler that snaps onto it. I got push all carts are the best, man. As For you sure. get older, dude, I thought they were so lame. I was like, this is a bitch ass like man stroller, and I'm oh, not why, a fan. Why are you gonna carry forty pounds? I know, in bag? I know, it's too much. Even whatever. now, when I caddy for you and I carry your bag, I'm like, I feel like a pack mule. So I like my push cart. So yeah. But, By uh, the way, since the last time we had an episode of this, I when. 
uh, Miss Mrs. Vesgood said, "I did well in the tournament. What place did I finish in that tournament?" Technically, first gross or net. Nobody gives a shit about net. All right. Yeah, first. Yeah, first. Yeah. By how many strokes? Seven. Seven. We had seven. a seven-stroke win seven. for the off-brand golf crew. Yeah, and then you're a championship caddy times how many? I mean, two. 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 You've been on the bag for two wins. That's right. Two amateur golf tournament wins. And I got a Scotty Kierman to show for it. You do. That was, I must say. So for you, Scotty Cameron Hawks, it was a uh, X five point five. Wait, Phantom. Phantom five. X5, not the... I have the 5.5. She has the 5. The difference is one's a slant neck and the other one's like straight into the uh, shaft neck. Bend, bend, single bend shaft. What else we got? Bedtime? Mm-hmm. Struggling over there? Mm-hmm. Nah. Drink. Look, when I you thought start, you were doing cocaine before. You, no, didn't I've you say never gonna... done cocaine. I never will. I said, when we walked in this room, I said, now I see why people do it. Because if it would mm. keep me awake, my life would be a lot easier. Because when you are living that corporate hustle life and you have a, a budding social life yep. and a darling significant other and you're playing golf and you're studying for sommelier exams and you're doing all the things, I've tried to fit a lot into a 24-hour period and I need to fit more sleep into it. What other? Oh, hold on. You have... The wine thing has basically become a hobby. Mm -hmm. That's the sommelier. She's learning to be some sort of level of sommelier. Mm -hmm. well, what other hobbies we got going on? Is that it? That's really it. Wine and golf. You're a big workout fitness. You're like big Absolutely. into the workouts. Yep. Got to be stuff. active. Got to have quality time with the girlfriends. All right. So this is number three. Wine, golf. What's number three? Not like the third hobby. Because like fitness is a hobby. For Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, you do it for reasons beyond it being a hobby, for but sure. it's yep, hobby right. level commitment. Yep. All right. All right. Yeah. So it, golf doesn't take too much time. It is it takes some time, but you can play nine and you can go practice. And it's a great, uh, well, once you start striking the ball well, it's a great stress reliever to go hit the range during lunch, before work, after work, whenever. You can fit it in. Look, we all spend way more time scrolling on fucking Reddit or Instagram or Twitter or some <laughs> dumpster fire internet site. So reallocate that time to a hobby and you'll be much happier. What, uh, what, in terms of, so I would say breaking a hundred is a good goal. For you, obviously, yeah, because you're a you, long way from that. You really think you're a long way? 100%. I think if you just swing the same way <laughs> a hundred times. So I try to do that. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> At least 90%. When do you think you'll break 100? Mm. We're, we're sitting in this studio on June 16th, right? Mm -hmm. 2022. It's going to be 2023 for sure. No for way. Sure. You won't break. In seven, no. six and a half months, you no. won't break a hundred. No, that's like shaving twenty. No, no, absolutely not. No, you were nineteen over par on one nine hole. Yeah, stretch. Yeah. So if you double that, yeah, it's still a lot. It's over 30, 38. <laughs> so that is one ten. Twenty twenty three. So, so 110, if you could just do that for, you'd already be at 110. You just need to take off 10. Like my actual golf goals for 2022 were to just start playing 18. So I'm already. Yeah. You kind of. I'm well into my, my goals. Let's. let's you you made reason. par. You made par on your first 18. I did actually. That's incredible. Yep. How'd you make your first birdie? Tell us about that. <laughs> did we talk about this last time? No. I don't. Did we? I thought we did. No way. We hadn't gone on that trip yet. It was my first travel round because Walker wants to play golf in all 50 states. And so we were crossing off Montana as a state to visit and play golf in. And we were on 18 and we're playing two, with two random fellows. <laughs> they were nice guys. Uh, and I was, I don't know, 20 yards off, 10, 20 yards off the green. The pin was kind of middle backish, yeah. middle. And uh, I was attempting to, you know, get up and down and just chip up onto the green, but I absolutely smacked the ball as I do because I have a 
phobia of hitting the ground. And luckily, it hit the flag. I think it actually hit the flag, hit the ground, like what popped the, up to the flag the, again. The and tee shot in. went where? So, by the way, this is a par five. It was not long, it but was. it's one of those par fives where you have to take less than driver because you're not. You, you'll never get driver over the hazard mm-hmm. hazards. Uh, so it was definitely shorter. So she had to like lay up short of water. So you did that on the first shot. The second shot, you got it close. She kind of messed up the third shot mm-hmm. a little bit. You missed the front of the green. Yep. So you're in front of the green yep. and chipping. And then what happened? And that's when I smashed it into the whoa. flag. Whoa, whoa. And then we started filming a porn on the green because that's very much where that sound went. Uh, I hey. absolutely sculled my chip, but luckily the flag was still in as it should have been, and it dropped right into the hole or hit the ground and hit the. Yes. It's very good. You, yeah, so she skulls this chip, and it was funny because she she had already tossed the club. Well, no, <laughs> no I you thought had, it was oh, a par Oh, that's right, four. that's right, that's so right. So I thought it was for par, and one of the guys was like, no, that was birdie. And what? I screamed, what? And I just threw my club, which actually went in the direction of the bag and almost, almost like landed magnetically in went the bag. into the, yeah, in, yeah. And I have a 14 way, so if it would have gone in the bag, it would have been <laughs> really impressive. Yeah, so I just absolutely, I'm surprised it didn't damage the flag. Yeah, it 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 was definitely hard. thin, but it was dead at the flag. So it took probably two hops, hit the flag and like the cup at the same time. So it shot straight up in the air off the flag, up the flag, down the pin and into the hole. And she, like the look on her face, I will never forget it, like, the, the look on your face in that moment on that day, like with the backdrop of like Montana behind you on my deathbed, like y- you will have been gone for 10 or 15 years by then. Oh God. But when I die. But you're that, old. So why am I dying before you? I don't know. Stress. Damn it. Stress. Probably. Throwing clubs. No doubt. Raging on a golf Ricocheting course. Ricocheting off my bag into my own head. Dude, it was it was incredible when you were like, "Oh my God, that's a four. And I knew it was a par five. And the guys were like, "No, no, no, that's birdie." I'm like, "Holy shit, you just made birdie. That was dope. You got a good picture." Yeah, and it was sweet. The people at the clubhouse were clapping for me, <laughs> as if that's, it were like a hole in one or something exciting. Yeah. Th- by the way, I, one of my favorite things about golf courses, like 18s that are uh, have like decks or like eating areas or event areas around them. Like I love playing up to them because people always like watch and like, you know, uh, applause for you or whatever. So you've made it through a second one. You introduced, you introduced this one, didn't you? I did kick us off. I think. Yeah, actually I did. Are you going to kick us off on all of them or all of them that I'm on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're just taking it over. Just the ones that I'm on, I will intro, but it's way past Veronica's bedtime, so this is an exclusive, uh, rare Veronica sighting. What what time do you normally go to bed? I mean, I like to be in bed by 10. 10. Like double digit hour, we got to go down. It's time. For such a hot broad, you are Dude. like a grandma. Look, your girl puts in work during the day <laughs> so this level of greatness is not achieved by being exhausted what a hell <laughs> what a hell so yeah i'm a tomorrow everyone that i meet with me like what a hell i got 13 meetings tomorrow they're gonna be like who's this fuck you do not here? not 13 13 13 13 <laughs> in person yeah how many i have probably fucking zero. Zero. yeah, yeah. they were all today yeah i'm gonna die i gotta go to los angeles Los Angeles, your favorite city in the Fuck whole that. country. Fuck LA. Sorry for from LA, <laughs> but LA is such a shithole. People are terrible. It's all fucking terrible. There are so it's many. It's like the worst part of California, there. and there's a lot of bad things about California, and LA is the fucking worst. What about? Uh, can we can we take these as roadies? These the drinks? No, we no, no, we oh. cannot. I, I thought you were a big roadie fan. Dude, I am a big roadie fan, but we're in. No, <laughs> no, absolutely not. All right, all right. So, hold on. How many? We were at nine forty-four. <laughs> There's no way someone else has subscribed during this random. No, we were at nine Wednesday evening at. We were. God, we were at nine forty-four. Where do you think we are now? Probably nine forty-four. 
That's your final answer? Yeah. I'm going to guess 945. Okay. I'm going to go one one higher. All right. What do we got? 945. Really? <laughs> we we got one more. That's good. God, that sucks, Because I heard I was going to be on the show. <laughs> what a... They're trying to tune in live. You're not in live. I know. All right. So episode eight. No. Episode nine of the off-brand golf show. We need to crank these out more often. You need to be on them more often. Can we get you in here with uh, Jason with the J? For sure. Then what? we're all just going to talk over each other like assholes the whole time. But nah, yeah, it's, it a shot. No, nah, it's fine. It's fine. An hour. You're pretty good at it. You just, you're tired. You're off your game today. Okay, stop saying that. <laughs> That's rude. You're off your game? Yeah. You're not off your game? Oh, we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> we all know it. We don't need to talk about it. <laughs> My bad. I, I'm gonna put, put you in a bad shot. And be like, "Well, that was a shitty shot." Like we all already know it. Don't talk about it. Hold on, let me grab my phone. I'm gonna put this on Instagram. Put what on Instagram? That I'm off my game. <laughs> yeah. Shit. All right, all right. Thanks for listening. We'll try not to fight so much next Please time. Please subscribe and put in the comments you purely subscribed in support and solidarity with <laughs> the Veronica Vesca who's exhausted and Walker's an asshole. <laughs> here, here. Cheers, y'all. <laughs>